Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this the Mercedes V class and usually the car is usually on. Uh, usually the car usually doesn't make sense. Okay, the usually the car is always on. However, today it is turned off because it doesn't get push button start. There's a key you have to insert it to turn it on. There's no passive entry as well. I would open the hood the first thing, but I just cannot find the lever to open the hood of this vehicle, which is shocking. Anyways, as you can see from the front, it looks like a grown up B class. And over here we've got the Mercedes logo. Mercedes logo here also. Bold up front. The grill is like really massive and nice. And of course the chrome treatment here works well. Chrome treatment around as well looks really nice. You get a front parking camera. You get front parking sensors, towing hook over here. And the lights are LED intelligent light system. They are beautiful. All right. You get the DRL here and great throw at night as well. Of course the lights are very nice. And you get the Mercedes logo here also. So great attention to detail in that sense. But as you start moving to the side, things start to go downhill because this is less of an MPV and more of a van. All right. It is actually based on the Vito panel van or the okay, the Mercedes has multiple vans actually in the portfolio for the commercial range. So, I mean, it's completely flat. It's massively long, more than five meters long. 3.2 meters is the wheelbase of this vehicle. And there's a lot of glass area here. Let me show you this, the wheels. All right, the wheels are 17 inches, hand cooked tires. And the tire size is 225, 55, 17s. Uh, alloy wheel design could have been more adventurous, but I would say that the light and the design, certain areas is really nice. Of course, you get indicators on the mirrors. The mirrors are big. And of course, you get a parking camera here as well. For the 360 degree parking camera, actually ground clearance is decent. Now, if I have to open this door, what do I do? Well, I can use this button. I can keep this pressed and there the door actually opens. All right. The other side door opened. So this was absolute pop for me right now in order to open this door. I can just pull it like this and there the door opens. That's so freaking cool. Let me close that door. Okay. Pressing a button, closing that door. In order to close this door, I can press this button or I can just pull the door out and it will close as well. So yeah, swinging doors, really nice touch. At the rear, again, everything is so flat and massive. Like the windscreen at the rear is massive. The wiper is massive. V220D written there. Mercedes logo, small light for what is particularly a very big car indeed. And to open the boot, all you have to do is press a button here or press a button there and it will open. Okay, this is a massive tailgate. The boot is actually big enough. You get a parcel shelf here, which by the way, can be removed as well. Like this, you can remove the parcel shelf and it's attached here. So it is kind of electronic. So you can increase the boot carrying capacity. However, remember one thing. All right. If you put it up, then inside rear view mirror will not show you much. And you putting it back into place. Yeah, now we have slotted it. Now let me open this. They are actually cubby holes to keep stuff more organized. So things don't fly when you're driving the vehicle along with this organizer. Okay. This is also very nice indeed. All right. Now, how do I close this? Very smartly, I've opened it. Yeah, but I know how to close it as well. Don't worry. Yeah, I have closed it too. So, yes, the boot is a massive. And of course, you can remove these rear seats and probably carry an A-class inside the vehicle. So, in order to close this, press this button and there it closes. Now, in order to show you the rear seat of this vehicle, first things first, let me open the rear door and we're going to be walking a lot today. So, I press this button and there the door opens. Yeah, that was slick, wasn't it? Now, before I get inside there, I need to turn on the vehicles to show you some functions behind, which is the air conditioning in particular. And because it doesn't have keyless go or push button start or none of that technology, I'll have to start the vehicle by putting the key here. And it does a full swipe here. It shows you exactly which door is open as well. You know what? You can actually close the door by pressing this button here. Yeah, press this button the door actually closes. Press this button, this door will open. So yeah, that's again a nice touch. Air conditioning is on full blast because it's so freaking hot somehow. I don't know why is it so hot. Anyways, like I told you earlier, to open the doors, it's very easy. There are multiple ways to open the door. Now right now to open the door, all I have to do is pull it here and it will open. Now this is common amongst every van. You can see there's a proper footstep here to climb Mercedes Benz written here. Now they are four seats. This car is available in either six seat, which is this one or the seven seat variant where there are three rows of seats and one seat will carry three people, of course. Okay, now these seats are facing each other. You can make these seats face forward as well. However, to turn them around is a big pain in your rear. And of course, another issue is right now, I'll tell you the big fat issue which I was facing is because this seat is upright right now. This seat cannot be pushed behind. And I like to sleep while driving, not really sleep while driving, but I like to sit in a position where the seat is a little bit more reclined for 
because I don't, I'm not like I'm doing a march pass that I have to sit upright. And that is a problem here because that seat won't let me push the seat behind. Now, in order to increase the space here in the seat, I can use this lever here and push the seat forward. Yeah, that is how it's done. Now, it can be flipped the other way and face forward. And that's how it's supposed to be. Because you can see there's a magazine holder here. Scooped out seat back. Okay, let me push this behind. Oh, some effort. This is a lot of effort. At this price, now it should have been electric. Completely electric. I can recline the seats like this. Here, I can recline all the seats like this. But it doesn't serve the purpose. Anyways, let's get inside the vehicle right away. Now, forward facing seats. Air conditioning controls here. So, the temperature is on low. You can put it at the lowest of 16 degrees. And 7 settings for the fan speed here. Let me turn it off right now. In order to close this, press this button and there it closes. So as you can see, there's good amount of space. But unfortunately, if you're going to sit like this, that person's leg is going to be in between my legs or my leg is going to be in between that person's leg, which is not the most convenient in terms of leg room. So yes, leg room will be a hindrance if you're going to sit like this facing each other. Meanwhile, under thigh support is decent, headroom is good and back support is also good but the seats don't really sink into you or rather you don't sink into the seat because these seats are not to the level of the E-Class or the S-Class because they're kind of hard seats, they're not soft, should have got this soft cushion pillow as well for the headrest, that would have been really very nice, okay, this is the parking sensor which actually beeps and these are the speakers, it got multiple speakers like Burmester, 15 speakers, 12 volt charging socket here, cubby hole here, same as the case there as well, 12 volt charging socket along with a cubby hole. Meanwhile, these seats are isofix, yeah, they get isofix child seat mounts and every seat gets armrest on either side, armrest here, armrest here. Let's keep the mobile here. Yeah, that is a neat touch. Can keep the mobile here. Obviously, it's going to rattle. Glass area is massive. There's so much airy feel inside the cabin. Unfortunately, there are no sun blinds. There should have been sun blinds that too electric at this price point. AC vents are placed here, there, there, there. Plenty of AC vents. Chills the cabin in no time at all. Hook here, light here. And yes, of course, every place you have a hook as well as a light. So in that sense, it is practical. Meanwhile, I'll just show you how this thing opens. Yeah, this is the tray, which is good to have meeting but I press this button and I push this behind or rather down and there it is slotted so yeah that is the situation here it doesn't get a single USB slot here in the rear it doesn't get a power socket to charge your laptop either which is again very disappointing so as you can see the space around here is great when the vehicle is stationary you can have a meeting but once the car starts moving people facing the other way while the car is being driven is not such a good idea because it induces puking and you know motion sickness anyways there's a hook here these windows don't open none of these windows open all right anyways I need to get out of the vehicle which means I have to press this button and there it opens come on Mercedes we need softer seats because you have set the benchmark with the S-Class of how seats should be inside a car but unfortunately that is not the case here anyways let's get inside you can see there's good amount of space when you see it from outside but when you sit inside you realize yeah things could have been better for sure and at a price of one crore plus things don't seem that right right now unfortunately front door pockets are massive and there's a cubby hole here as well keep, can keep your mobile phone here yeah and this space here as well you can keep your mobile phone here as well lumbar support electric adjust memory seats can save three people settings but it gets heated seating it doesn't get ventilated or cooled seats unfortunately because yeah india is very hot climate anyways these are the controls for the outside mirror these are the controls for the front power windows there's no rear power windows there are no windows which open at the rear unfortunately and burmester sound system 15 speakers inside this car and of course build quality is fab now this is the control for the headlight this is for the fork light this is to increase or decrease the intensity of the instrument cluster this is the handbrake electric parking brake this is for the 360 degree camera and there is sort of a lot of space below there in the foot area to rest your left foot which is a good thing this is an automatic meanwhile the steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake but it is not electric it has to be done manually inside this vehicle this is the switch for the cruise control this is obviously for the headlight as well as the wipers headlight because obviously for the indicators meanwhile for the wipers as well press this button and the wipers work really well inside this vehicle lot of glass area some a massive amount of glass area i love the ac vents in fact the front looks really very nice the dashboard is really premium good amount of material used like wood of course and this beautiful treatment piano black touches and whatnot mercedes has done a great job here glove box is decent size not really big but there's a tray up as well and light obviously turns on as soon as you open the glove box auto dimming inside rear view mirror there's a sunglass holder here plenty of lights like a lot of lights inside this vehicle so that's not an issue at all okay all of them have been turned off almost yes 
and you get a mirror along with a light here sun visor is massively big and right now i'm going to use it because sun is coming from that side multiple airbags like this car is filled with a lot of airbags again you get a light along with the mirror handle to hold on to there's a handle here as well to hold on to seat belts are height adjust too and there's a handle here as well but before we get too excited i have to break it to you this is a very small size infotainment system i think this must be a seven inch or probably even lesser obviously it's not a touch screen unit it misses out on a lot of features as well these are the controls for the air conditioning these are actually the controls for the audio system and various functions meanwhile actually you can see this is a beautiful system it's like a touch activated and works really well getting inside vehicle or telephone or whatever so i need to browse it through this let me get back press this back button to get back and actually there are not many options here like you would expect from mercedes car in 2019 then there's a 360 degree camera as well which works well now this is the 360 degree camera i can get into 180 degree view or 360 degree view this is the 180 degree view this is the 360 degree view and obviously if i get into reverse the camera gets activated it has got guidelines and it also shows the guidelines over here where the vehicle is going to go in the 360 degree camera view which is again a very nice touch now this is obviously the gear selector of this vehicle these are the controls for the audio system these are the controls for this multi information display over here and it's usual mercedes affair but this is an older unit which we see in the c class obviously so as you can see it's analog so analog speedometer on the left analog tachometer on the right and in the center we get a screen which gives you a lot of information like outside temperature 39 degrees right now almost and there's a fuel meter here there's a temperature meter here so decent amount of information on offer usual mercedes affair from the 2012s because this is actually an old car which was made around that time it gets paddle shifters and obviously these are the controls for the rear wiper so there it is the rear wiper the rear wiper works really well obviously because it is massively long somehow and you can't see a spot of water which has been sprayed because that is how functional the rear wiper is front seats are comfortable could have been more comfortable though obviously you get electric adjust for the co-driver as well with memory settings and heated function too come on we need ventilated function in india it's just too hot this looks really nice actually this is the volume control this is turn off the screen and this is basically to open the rear door right door rear left door this is to turn off auto stop start because you don't really want to save fuel when you're driving a car which weighs 3000 kgs and this is the various modes of the vehicle so obviously there's eco there's comfort and there is sport and this is for the parking sensors now let me turn on the screen right now and you can turn on and off the parking sensor and the usual mercedes warning when you turn on the vehicle now over here there's a lot of space okay there you can keep a lot in fact you can seat one person here that's the amount of space over here twin cup holders a lot of space here there's a 12 volt charging socket actually it's a cigarette lighter and there are two usb ports along with an sd port here and yeah this thing closes gives a very nice look so it's a very van sort of a dashboard design because usually vans have this dashboard design wherein you know uh, there is nothing in between somehow and you get front center armrest as well individually you can adjust it according to your liking and i love how the whole dashboard looks so nice with this stitching of course leather everything seems very premium and i love the horn in particular it is really very nice anyways press this button straight away to get into vehicle settings and this rotary controller is also very nice and slick but unfortunately there's not much inside this infotainment system to you know really excite you and considering the price it should have come with a lot more features but let's quickly play an audio right away <laughs> audio quality is really very brilliant in fact it is really crisp but this 15 speaker bimester system is actually optional and there is no sunroof inside this vehicle which is very disappointing it should have got a massive sunroof at the rear at least meanwhile it gets a three zone climate control one for the right one for the left and one for the rear as well but how is it to drive well let's get driving right away so figured something out you can actually push this ahead and with great difficulty i managed to do that once this is pushed ahead you know these trays are usable now obviously i have to take the tray up press this button it rises and there now the tray is pretty much useful however the front seat is very close so actually the middle tray here sorry uploading something right now the middle tray here is uh, placed in such a way that actually the other person can also use it so once you push it ahead it can be used and you know what there are cubby holes here below so once you raise this there's space to keep stuff here as well as well as here so in terms of storage spaces this car is like loaded with a lot of options all right we're all set to go air conditioning off getting into sport mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator manual mode revving the motor rev still almost 2000 plus and off we go yeah power delivery is extremely linear there's no kick in the pants feeling of course this car is all about smoothness you know you can't really throttle hard and throw people all around the vehicle because the rear bench is actually for comfort it is not for you to go all over the place so as far as performance goes it's extremely linear 
we'll be having a speed breaker right ahead brakes are very nice ground clearance isn't an issue at all hard to the throttle and it's very refined a motor but post 4000 rpm it kind of feels gruff red lines very quickly at around four and a half thousand rpm now this is the old mercedes engine the om651 unfortunately it's not the latest om654 now this 2.1 liter unit outputs 163 horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque thankfully those 380 newton meters of torque come in at a low 1400 rpm and peak after 1000 rpm at 2400 rpm so there's good amount of grunt on offer and overall performance is adequate considering this car weighs almost 3000 kgs 0 to 100 kilometers per hour takes around 11 seconds top speed is around 170 kilometers per hour but it does struggle post 120 kilometers per hour so out on the highway if you want to make a quick overtake you really have to dab the accelerator pedal multiple times if not that then you have to use the steering mounted paddles to get a downshift quickly because the gearbox the seven speed gearbox isn't the fastest in terms of shifts it does take its sweet time to shift gears and that's fine because the smoothness is there in terms of smoothness this car absolutely excels and uh, i would say the overall performance is great because drivability is great in this vehicle this is not a car to put a big smile on your face as soon as you get onto the throttle because this is more about refinement smoothness and comfort and in that sense it absolutely excels but around the corners well it is a handful because there is just so much body roll on offer i mean it rolls it rolls it rolls and it rolls even more because obviously of the height however the steering is an absolute gem it offers great feel and feedback somehow i don't know how it manages to do that now this is an electromechanical steering wheel which is lifted from the c-class and it weighs up brilliantly at high speeds at lower speeds it is light enough to you know not make you feel the heft of this vehicle because this is actually a very heavy car and the size is massive in fact the size is so big now you actually are worried that you're driving a minibus so how do you actually pilot it but there is no issue at all once you get going because the overall performance or rather the ease of driving from this vehicle is just something else all right want to make a quick overtake you have to plan that you just cannot be like okay now i will dive and take a quick overtake because it needs to be planned very carefully there is not too much power on offer as such and uh, although the performance is decent i would say for a car of this size out on the highway you know you just can't be like okay hard under the throttle and i will make an overtake because it doesn't work that way now here we are downshifting the gearbox will not hold on to a gear even if you plan to do so there are three modes on offer naturally there's an eco mode there's a comfort mode there's a sport mode as well ride quality is brilliant it rides beautifully well in fact it absorbs almost everything in its stride however at low speeds you know there is some sort of uh, i would say disturbance in the ride quality obviously you get tall springs suspension is on the softer side which boards well for the most part of it however at higher speeds over bad roads there's just too much vertical movement coming through this corner you can see the steering is offering good amount of feel no denying that fact however the problem arises only from the body roll there's just too much body roll on offer obviously because of the weight size and whatnot tires offer decent amount of grip attraction control is there but you can't turn it off or i was actually searching for it in the menu couldn't find it at all so definitely performance is great and the ride quality is also great in terms of comfort it is great the steering offers good amount of feedback it is only that the handling feels like a handful because this is obviously not a car to push around the corners brakes offer show footage stopping power to stop this big massive vehicle and the stop start system has turned off the vehicle here we are revving the motor revs to 2000 rpm and off we go no drama just smoothness smooth and refined pull and off it goes okay stop singing so yes love the steering on this vehicle somehow mercedes is able to make steering wheels which are just so feelsome of a great amount of feedback as well but this is a slow vehicle a car which costs rupees one crore plus should definitely be faster than this probably they should have given a v6 motor in it a v6 diesel would have been really nice by the way this being the older diesel engine still somehow complies with bs6 emission norms although globally this car has got a facelift which has given it features which it has been lacking along with the new diesel engine of course that facelift will come to india but unfortunately the timing was so poor as soon as mercedes launched this car in india the global facelift was launched so yeah that's kind of sad but i expect that facelift to come sooner or later overall performance great refinement levels are nice and uh, this is not a driver's car by any means of imagination of course it's not it thuds through uh, over bad roads obviously because of the softer suspension setup okay if i go through this road you can see yeah you can hear that but for the most part the suspension is on the silent side and i wouldn't dare to push it hard around corners because i know it can roll a lot all right we're having a corner here downshifting here we are into third gear through the corner 
I mean, it is very predictable somehow. It's not going to surprise you silly, and it is so easy to drive as well. So as you can see, the Mercedes V Class or the V220D has ample amount of grunt on offer, and most importantly, it is a car which makes it mincemeat of driving in spite of its size. So should you buy one at a price of rupees 86 lakhs for the base trim, which happens to be the expression, or the 1.03 crore pricing for this particular car, which happens to be the exclusive? Yeah, it's going to remain exclusive because at this price point, it is very expensive. expensive 1.03 crores for a vehicle which is actually missing out on a lot of features and uh, you know it's just too big and cumbersome to drive in the city although it's easy to drive but still the size is so big you have to find a parking spot and misses out on a lot of features as well i mean certain things actually feel dated inside this car so that is going to be one big challenge because mercedes has trying the third time now with the v class or rather in the mpv segment or rather the van segment or whatever you want to call it because in the 90s or rather 1999 they had launched the mb100 and the MB B140. They were vans. They did not work well. Then they launched the R Class in 2011. I drove that car and I found it good. But again, the looks weren't spectacular. But it was more dynamically able than this particular vehicle. And it was launched in petrol, guys. Only this being the diesel, and this offering tons and tons of comfort. Somehow the seats are not E Class level. I don't know why. At least it should be S Class level for a car of this size or price. But it's not. That's one hitch. But that said, all right, people who are going to have this kind of a budget would definitely prefer the E Class. over the v class because the v class may be making a style statement in terms of being something different and unique but still the e class is one of the best luxury cars in the market today so guys this is my review of the mercedes okay 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 you can see you can hear a lot inside the cabin the road is very broken but for the most part i would say ride is pretty good brakes so stupendous and around the corners no worry okay i mean you don't have to be hyper while driving this car it doesn't make you hyper at all you can't be hyper because you have to be smooth you have to guide the steering in port in a in a way that people who are sitting behind can conduct their meeting finish it properly and not puke around because trust me if you drive this car fast enough trust me trust me trust me on this many people are going to puke including me the driver <laughs> <laughs> Anyways guys if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye Two days later, hi guys, and welcome to another vlog. Actually, the same vlog, and I finally figured how to open the hood after reading a lot on Google and what not. But you know what? It is somewhere here. You really can't find it. You just keep pulling, 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 and then there's this handle which is placed ulta. I don't know why it's placed ulta, but finally I figured it out, and I have managed to open the engine bay. Wait a second, guys. All right, this is the engine bay. Hydraulic struts, compact engine bay. Mercedes logo should have been in chrome. Would have looked really nice. So that is the engine of the Mercedes V Class, the V220D insulation here. But it is kind of loud. Meanwhile, the attention to detail is so freaking massive. Okay, look at this. There's the Mercedes logo here on the tip of the wiper. I know it's a little dirty because I was actually driving it in 19 degree north, which is over here right now. You can see, it's absolutely crazy. And the length is massive. By the way. This is the high variant the excellence and the lower variant expression actually misses out on almost every possible feature but it has a longer wheelbase yeah even longer than this it's longer than this car and it is basically for the commercial market taxi market it gets a manual handbrake as well it's very basic in that sense and roads are beautiful weather is hot let's get driving yet again all righty so here we go buckling up air conditioning making a lot of noise supremely hot weather it's like massively hot and here we go all right now this is not the place to drive the mercedes v class i don't even know why i am trying this but hey being adventurous is always nice here is the bullet right going on right now people have actually come out and yeah so here we go now riding on this road is so much fun in a mercedes v class as well somehow you can see this car is absolutely composed because the ride quality is brilliant it's a mercedes after all so now i've shown you off roading in a mercedes as well a v class which is kind of weird anyways guys this vlog is over bye bye